Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be doing this special style here for a wedding photograph where you have the couple in color and then it fades off into a black and white outside. Now this is done by making a special mask, as you can see right here. It's a form-following layer mask that then fades out. Let me show you how this is done. We'll start with the original photo up here. I'm just going to delete this layer mask. There we go. So here's the original photo. And the first thing you want to do is you want to do a selection around the image. Now this doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to be relatively close. So I'll use the polygonal lasso tool over here. And let's zoom in. And I'll just pick a spot right down here to start. And I'll be in fairly close as you can see, but I'm not going to be touching the figures. I'm not going to be getting in that close to them. Just you know, reasonably up next to it here. So I don't need to worry about things like the hair or stuff like that. Just go around those areas. There we go. So you don't need really to be that critical. Now to move it when you're using this tool, just hold the space bar down. You can then drag that, let go of the space bar, and you're back to your standard selection tool again. It's just a matter of making a nice, easy selection. I'm using the polygon selection tool because I just find it easy for this kind of a technique here. You can use any selection method you'd like, but again, keep in mind that we don't really need to be real super careful on this, just up next to the image. This part is pretty easy, just pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to pause the video at this point and I'll finish making this selection. No reason to make you watch for a couple of minutes while I do this. So I'll just pause this and I'll bring this right back up in just a moment. And there we go. There's the finished selection. Notice how it's up tight against the figures but not touching the figures. Okay, let's just back out a bit so you can see the whole selection here. There we go. I went clear down and around the bottom as well. I didn't bother in here. That'll be fine leaving that in color. So there's the selection and again up tight but not touching. Now that we have that we can modify this selection. What I want to do is I want to expand the selection out further and then we're going to soften up that edge. So let's go up to select and come down to modify and expand. Now I've already played around with this obviously because I had that example at the beginning and what I found worked out well for me was 50 pixels. The value here will change depending upon the size of your image and how much you want to have this fade but for me 50 was pretty good so I'll just choose OK and there it is that's now moved that selection out 50 pixels so it's exactly 50 pixels clear around the whole figure so even though it's way out here it's following the figure very very evenly and that's the whole idea behind this. Now once you have this made, we then can convert this into a layer mask. Just hit the layer mask button right there. There we go. And you can also of course find that up here under layer mask, under layer menu. Now go over to the layer mask, make sure that that's selected, look for the light blue outline around it, and then go over to filter, come down in here to blur and Gaussian blur. Now at this point, we can try different blur settings on this until we get a nice even soft blur. Now with a 50 edge I wouldn't want to go up much beyond about 40 on this. At that point it's beginning to come into the figures. You can see right down here it's into the leg down there at 36. So let's back it up just a little bit so 24 is about halfway, let's say 25 pixels. That's about half the thickness of what I did, so it's looking clean. I'm not seeing any problems down there along the leg. I'm not getting any transparency in the leg itself, and I have a nice soft fade on there. So what we did was a 50 pixel expansion 
or extension of the selection and then a 25 pixel Gaussian blur on the layer mask itself and choose OK and there we go. So if I bring up the background here you can see it now there it is just a nice even selection that actually follows the figures around. That's what we're aiming for. We want to have that nice following of the figure shape. Now to do the black and white this is the easy part. Let me just get rid of this layer all together so I'll start from scratch on that. There we go. Take the image Make sure on the image side, drag it to the new layer button. There we go. We now have two copies of this. This is going to be the original right here. And this is our black and white. Put the black and white under the original. Just drag it down. Right click on the layer mask and delete the layer mask. There we go. Now all we need to do is we need to convert this black and white to black and white. Easy enough. Layer and actually enhance. There we go. Come down to convert to black and white. Several different settings in here. Infrared, newspaper, scenic, landscape, urban, and so forth. You can try the different settings, see which one you like, but I found that portraits works out well for a portrait. And it just removes the color. Choose OK and there we go. So we now have the background area here is hidden in our top image and it's showing that black and white in behind. And that gives us that nice color in the portrait and then it just fades off and fades into black and white on the outside. Very nice kind of an effect. Now if we go to the very bottom down here, if I, I'll just link these together, if I move this image, actually I'm going to hide that one, if I move the top image up a bit, let's say I wanted to use this in some kind of a montage or something or a, a collage and I reposition this or change the size you may have these sharp edges here this is where the edge of the picture is and the outline of the selection came right up against that edge so we see the edge down there now the way you fix that kind of a little problem easy to do go over to the layer mask and black hides white shows so I want to hide that edge so make sure you have black let's go to a paintbrush and with the paintbrush what you want to do is you want to set that for about double the size of your width that we had there so we had 50 so I want to have this at least a hundred pixels and you want this to be a soft brush let's find a soft brush that's more than 100 I'll, I'll just go 200 on that one so as long as it's more than than double then we should be fine. And so we have our soft brush, 200 pixels in this case, black color, that's all correct. Let's move this back over so you can see our layers. Make sure you're on the layer mask. Look for that light blue outline. And then simply paint in right around the edges of here, just carefully to just knock out that little hard edge. And there we go. That's all nice and cleaned up. The other side is fine, so we can then move this back into position right there. And we'll move up a little bit here. There we go. Bring our black and white back in again. I had them linked, as you can see there, so they moved together. And there it is. There's our nice color photograph fading off into a black and white background. Now, the amount of space in here, the amount of color around them, is determined by how much expansion you did on that initial selection. So you can make this thinner if you want to, but I kind of like having enough there to actually see the fade out happening. That kind of adds to the magic of the effect. Okay, let's just zoom out a bit and see the whole picture. There we go. There it is. So that's it. That's how you do a color portrait fading out into black and white. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this